Yo, what's up guys, AFC Udino here and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to do high ladder spectates. So what I'm going to do in this series is wait every round for battles to start and we're going to spectate the highest rated battle um, in that round. And yeah, just uh, see what the high ranked players are doing uh, these days. Maybe we'll find out new sets. Maybe we'll figure out new sets and strategies. Can always be interesting. And it's always good to like expand, like look for other people what they are doing, and it's gonna help give you some insight in the meta. What uh, to see what people are playing instead of seeing what I am playing all the time. <laughs> so if you guys are enjoying the series, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I have way I'm, I'm planning to do may, way more of these, and obviously I have daily videos and regular PvP battles of my own uh, to help you improve or for your entertainment, whatever. And don't forget to hit this like button as well. And if you are looking for some PvP teams, you can check out my Patreon. I have all the teams that I use in my videos right there. And yeah, guys, without further ado, let's uh, wait, wait for the next round to start and we'll be right back. Okay, guys. Four seconds before the next round starts. Okay, guys, I actually decided to skip the, the previous battle uh, just because it wasn't interesting. Uh, so let's see what we'll find here. Psycho versus AHI Sunny. There's a semi-rain team into Hyper Offense, looking look like. Rank 93 on the right side. Inferno probably... Uh, Eldrock if he leads off like this. So perhaps we're gonna see a rapid spin off this Excadrill. Infernape is typically not running. On Steldrock sets, it's typically not running. Priority, I believe. Like if it's an Endeavor set, Steldrock. Maybe, maybe it is. But uh, yeah. Let's see how this uh, Excadrill, what this Excadrill is going to do. Because on one hand, the guy probably doesn't want to deal uh, with Steldrock. He didn't rapid spin on that turn. Maybe he's just rapid spinning here since he does have the does have the sash probably on this. If he leads off like this. We see Gengar coming in. But if Gengar dies, then Mach Punch is looking pretty dangerous from Bloom as well. Do we see Icy Wind there. So Gengar probably not having the Gengar probably not having the Focus Blast in this one, and Gengar does die. Oh, yeah, Off like defensively doesn't really matter for Psycho that much. But uh, it's kind of opens up Brilloon for a Mach Punch end game later on, uh, but Excadrill won't be able to spin there. Goes straight into the Pelipper, and let's see what we'll, what he's going to do there. Earthquakes there. Leftovers, Chomp. I wonder what this uh, guard can pass. The yeah, ice beams immediately. <laughs> yeah, so it's a Scarf Pelipper. <laughs> yeah. So we're probably going to see Tyranitar coming in here. Uh, to oh, actually go Scissor. Maybe si use a Scissor Pursuit. Because if you remove the rain, then the matchup is going to be so much easier. That Reuniclus is dangerous, though. Actually doesn't Pursuit. What is he doing? U-turning? Sword Stance. Then... Then Exeter probably gets off a rapid spin. Psycho is kind of playing this poorly, I gotta say. Why didn't he rapid spin? You have a Kingdra full HP in the back, brother. You you have a Pelipper full HP, seventy five percent HP. Study, why didn't why didn't you rapid spin there? You have a Dragonite with multi skill. Sunny, why didn't you rapid spin there? My god. Making it so much difficult than it had to be. Infernip does go down here. Well, rocks are up on both sides. But I just felt like rapid spinning made so much more sense, guys. <laughs> But yeah, we see Tyranitar coming in. Let's see how uh, 
Psycho is going to recover from this because it's not looking good for him. It's not looking good for him. Like scissors in mock punch range, the Renatar dies to mock punch. Dragonite comes in and rocks. We do see him going straight into Pelipper. Goes for Edge. And now he's gonna go Kingdra and spam Surf. What's he gonna do? Maybe Runiclus can 1v1 the Dragonite. And he has his own Dragonite in the back as well. I just felt like if you rapid spend, it would have been so much easier. We do see a scissor sack arm. And then probably I don't know if the Renatar comes in or Dragonite. If Dragonite comes in, you might just want to click surf there. Because at that point Breloom wins because you can go into to your Dragonite. So he does go into Tsar. Ice Punch. So that's a Scarf Tar. And he gets the freeze. Oh no. It is a scary because. Maybe he wants to go Dragonite now and Dragon Dance up. I think he had to swap out to Reuniclus there. Wait, what are you doing, Sunny? The reason you go Reuniclus, you know Tyranitar is Scarfed. So. Reuniclus easily takes an Ice Punch from a Scarf Tar. Then you can start Trick Rooming if you have it. You can Calm Mind up against that team. You can use Iron Defense, whatever. But this, this is uh, atrocious now. Got into Reuniclus now. Like you knew Tyranitar was Scarfed. Is that a crit? It's not a crit. It's a Dragon Jam plus one, I see. Because what he could do if if because that was an offensive trick uh Runiclus, so I assume he has trick room on it, right? If you trick room right there, then Breloom kinda wins, right? You have Rock Tomb or something. Because Breloom probably slower than the Dragonite. And you don't have to use Mach Punch versus a Dragonite either. And you, you're faster than Tyranitar anyway with Mach Punch. Yeah, the freeze are obviously unfortunate, but uh, then you gotta look for your next play and not hope that you thaw. You just gotta assume that you're, you stay frozen. At that point, because you still had some Pokemon left. Knowing the guy was locked in. But yeah, maybe Dragonite can still win. <laughs> he can definitely survive but it's a Renatar Scarf so it makes no sense that he, he's not gonna win. Scarf Tar unless the Renatar misses. Nah, the Renatar always clicks Ice Punch there. But then Dragonite dies. So wouldn't it be nice to have the Stale Drug removed right now? <laughs> so ba basically coaching, coaching is sunny. I should review this game because you could have definitely won. Like I think you have to, you have to prioritize removing this these rocks because it's gonna help your Pelipper. It is it is helping your Pelipper right there. It is helping Kingdra as well because you don't want to take damage for, from Kingdra because you want to take as le less damage as possible uh, so you, that you can survive an extreme speed so that you can survive a bullet punch. The same goes for the Dragonite, of course. Keeping him in multi skill can be really beneficial as well. Because what he could have done as well against that Dragonite is Dragon Dance up right there. Because you live a plus one Dragon Climb and win the speed die on the extreme speed. Then you outspeed the Tyranitar. Maybe you can hit him up with a Dragon Claw crit. Maybe have Earthquake or something. Like, then he's showing why he's an ace trainer. But that's, that's alright. Everyone has to learn. But he could have definitely won that game. Even with that phrase. But uh, yeah, guys, how long have we been in? Yeah, we don't count the first battle, so yeah, we're not really long into this video. So I am going to pause it. We're going to look for another one and we'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys, I actually found um, this, this Zepto's matchup. So it should definitely be interesting. It should definitely be interesting. Three legendaries on Yuto's team. The Ace Trainer. Ace Trainer obviously running a rain team with Zapdos. 
So I'm curious to see. Size method on that team, Scizor. So what did he replace? Oh, he, there's no Toxicroak. Normally, Toxicroak is on this team, but Zepdos is there instead. So, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely interesting to see. I do... Yeah, this, this, this matchup could go either way. So, we do see a Zapdos lead. Are we going to see it into a Pelipper? Okay, so that's going to be a Hurricane from Hudo probably coming out. And there's no real switch on List, List Diaz teams. <laughs> Because if Seismethod is gonna get a, it's gonna take a lot from uh, Hurricane, but that might be like a defensive uh, Zapdos. So we'll have to see. But like I said in one of my videos, Zapdos as Suicune is gonna be such a common core, and that is an offensive uh, <laughs> Zapdos. <laughs> yeah, switching into Hurricane. Yeah, Life Orb. So I don't know if you want if he wants to weather ball or if he wants just wants to get up the rocks, but Ferris from probably coming in there anyway. So he's gonna stealth rock up here. I think you keep this and just go scissor. Because you don't have any switch ins to use up those. So you, you might want to keep this as a sec. Because you're not doing any damage to this anyway. Okay, then go scissor now. Because it's not about getting damage off on this you want to have that sec when that septos comes in that would have been a free scissor guys that would have been a free scissor because <laughs> what are you gonna do if you bring in scissor you're, you're gonna close combat maybe you kill this septos comes in again and he's gonna claim another pokemon with hurricane he actually went into suicune but seismito does a lot of damage there and that damage on Suicune is pretty nice for Scizor. Now we're gonna see like a Power Whip coming off here. Maybe Grass Knot. If he has it, maybe he's gonna Earth Power again. 53, I think that's a crit. <laughs> so I, I, I guess Lizdia knew this was going to happen. Because that's gonna open up Kabutops, especially if he has Super Power on this. Because Kabutops can kind of take over this game right now. Because he resists Ice Shard, he resists Extreme Speed. He's going to be faster than Zapdos in the rain, and Zapdos dies to Extreme Speed. Losing that Sweet, I don't understand the Sweet can switch anyway. He could have just stayed in with Ferrothorn. Yeah, because now Kabutops going to win this, wins this game. So basically, both players were playing a lot there. Like you really, when you go into team preview, you gotta think about what am I defensively using against my keeping against my opponent. What are my what are my strong threats? Like you need to keep Suicune for the Kabutops because otherwise Kabutops is going to steamroll because Ferrothorn already took damage there. We do see a Dragonite coming in the air. Okay. So basically what Judo is trying here is try to, trying to lower the Kabutops. For his priority moves. But yeah, taking, getting the damage on Dragonite is already pretty decent. He has to double electric. Let's see how uh, Lysia is going to play this. Because I can then... Why did he stay in, bro? This is your win condition, man. Your minus one defense, brother. If that's a choice, man, a Dragonite, and he clicks extreme speed. You also have a chance to die there. These people really need to watch this video, man. You're not gonna risk your win condition, because that extreme speed could have also crit him. Because now, yeah, obviously there's still a Kingdra there. However, if, if Raikou starts, starts call mining up, it's called it a lot actually. And I don't know why he went straight into Raikou. If Raikou had call mined, then you don't go straight into. Then you get. Oh my god, these guys, man. You. 
Because if Raikou gets off Pakal Mind, he can technically win on his own. But you want to get a free Call Mind when you're full HP. You want to get a Call Mind when you're full HP into the Pelipper. Because now Kingdra is just going to sweep with Surf. It's all. It's it's over. Kingdra comes in and spams Surf. Because if if Raikou has a Call Mind, he's going to live the Surf. And, R and Pelipper's most likely not staying in on Raikou. I can imagine him doing it on a free switch ride. For example, he could have just let his Mammoth Swine die. Like, click Icicle Crash or something with the Mammoth Swine. Doesn't really matter. Let Mammoth Swine die, then get in Raikou and Calm Mind up. Then you, with the Calm Mind, you live. You live the Surf. Because that Kingdra is now way too healthy. But perhaps Mammoth Swine can knock it out with the Ice Shard. Or maybe, maybe, maybe sacrificing Zapdos would have been a better play in that sense. But yeah, we'll have to see. Life Orb, not enough. Goes for the Surf and Zapdos is going to drop as well. Obviously, <laughs> killing that Suiko with the crit is uh, a bit unfortunate, but it's not uncommon to have Power Whip on Seismic Toad either. Because they, they carry it for Rotom Wash. So I don't agree with bringing in your Suiko there and getting obliterated by Kabutops. But yeah, that was the game. Like they really need to step, like, stand still on um, team preview. Yeah, and choose what what your checks are, what your offensive threats are. Because doing that shit, like both players made a lot of questionable plays. Like I said, if Raikou got off the call mic, there was a good chance that Raikou could still win because he's gonna live a surf even in the rain uh, when. He's calm minded up because Raikou's sp special defense is pretty decent. And he's leftovers too. But switching it in and being at half HP is not good for Raikou. But uh, yeah, guys, how long have we, are we in? Still below 20 minutes. I think we're just going to look for another game, guys. Be right back. Okay, guys, the next round is about to start. Let's. Uh, See what we can expect. It's 685. It's Psycho again. Obviously, when they're top of the ladder. Into I Dark Dream with a Sigalith. That's pretty interesting. I actually use Sigalith as well in tournaments, and yeah, it has been. It was really. It was doing really good. But yeah, Psycho rank 70. I Dark Dream rank 34. Should be interesting. Both running pretty like. A pretty bulky offensive balance team on a Dark Dream side. Psycho running the Hyper Offense, I believe. What do you see in Inferno? We knew from the last game that he did have rocks. But let's see what he's going to do now. Delt rocks. And what is Inferno going to rip Crockett? Close combats into him immediately, doing 95%. But that's probably not, of, it's not definitely not Choice Bandit. So we see a flame charrier close combat into a flame charrier. We don't see a life orb either. So I'm curious what kind of uh, item we see on this Infernape. But I guess Sigalif is going to be defog. He, so so it's a focus sash one. So anti leaf focus sash. And what is he going to do back? Flame charrier. So probably blaze on this as well. Getting some chip off on Gengar. Yeah, I guess because Dark Dream is running. Uh, three fighting types. Now he has two fighting types left, but they love to click Mach Punch against the opponent. So, Conkeldra actually coming in. That might be a Salt Fest then, if he switches it. Because he has a Porygon in the back as well. Actually, that's not a Salt Fest. Okay, he just wants to get this gone for Perloom, I guess. Play more. And I think Sigalith 
Sigilyph might be able to check Dragonite as well if he has Ice Beam, because he doesn't take Rocks damage. I don't know if he goes Sigilyph now, he has a Porygon as well, so... He does go into it now, Earthquakes, and probably Defogging here. We don't see a Flame Orb, so it's not one of those. Obviously Tyranitar comes in. Air Slashing. What are you guys air slashing for here? Because damage on Tyranitar doesn't matter. Like I could, I can already tell you, the Tyranitar comes in. Ice Punch comes off. Tyranitar actually going first. So that might be Scarfed. That might be Scarfed. Oh, that is, that is Scarfed because we saw an Ice Punch <laughs> earlier. As well, yeah. It's obviously... It is the same, yeah. It's leftover Chomp here. I'm, sh I'm not sure what Sigilev was trying to do there, but... Conkeldor being pretty low. I'm pretty sure Conkeldor is in Ice Punch range as well. But that's gonna be a mind game, uh, what the Conkeldor is going to do. If Conkeldor comes in, obviously Brunum comes in. Dragonite is still alive as well. But if I look at this, if Scissor dies, then Porygon can 1v3 the team, but he needs to kill Scissor somehow. Yeah, Scissor's not gonna really stay in against Hydreigon, probably. If he has a Tyranitar left. We do see Kunkalder coming, coming in. Kunkalder is at 27. He should die to Ice Punch. Like, Scald from a defensive Suicune kills here as well. We'll see. We do see a swap out there. Is he gonna Ice Punch here? He revealed Ice Punch. Yep. <laughs> like, at that point, I think you just stay in with Tar, to be honest. Making sure that this guy either doesn't heal or doesn't get to kill on Mana. Because Garchomp being gone. Um. One Pokemon slower than Hydreigon now. Because now the whole team is slower than Hydreigon. Yeah, obviously, Scarfed are, but the others are slower. Let's see what Scissor does here. I think Conkeldor is gonna he's gonna stay in with Conkeldor. So you just pull it there. Yeah. So what is he gonna bring in? Hydreigon. I don't, I don't think you should keep Scissor in here. On the other hand, <laughs> what if this is one of those Dragon Dance superpower sets <laughs> with focus energy? He actually goes for rocks breaking the multi skill. Okay, this is, this might be a bit close. I don't think uh, High Dragon dies to Ice Punch though. He actually went for Edge there, gets off a Draco, doing 68. Now Breloom. Well, Scissor should kind of win here at this point. But if that's Bandit Scissor, depending on the Porygon set, Porygon could technically do something. But I think you obviously keep Hydreigon in. I mean, you gotta play off him being banded and then get in Porygon. Get to a good amount of HP. Kill Dragonite on the switch. And then see what Scissor locks himself into. Because I think you gotta play like his choice bandit. He actually went this first. I don't know about that, brother. Is it, Bloom, is Bloom able to live Bullet Punch? He Mach Punches there. Life Orb. Acrobatics. Yeah, that scissor just wins anyway. Yeah, the him doing his stuff with the Sigilev was really questionable, especially again you knew the Tyranitar was choice banded, a uh, choice carved. Sigilev was still useful into his team, like it still checks Dragonite if it has ice, ice, uh, ice beam, of course. Hidden power, and especially if you had hidden power. Could have gone this first. Go. 
But yeah, if he had close combat Umber Loom, that would have been a different story. <laughs> but he was Life Orb, maybe he had it. You never know. But yeah, Borgen should go down to the Dragon Claw and Psycho wins this game. So yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure what the Sigil what the purpose was of Sigilif, because I assumed he was a defog. He didn't have rocks up yet. So he, he could have just defogged on when he swapped it in on the Garchomp, I believe. And I believe it wasn't an earthquake from Garchomp. Because you should like Tyranitar should come, especially if you don't see a flame arp. Nine times out of ten the player the, the opponent is going to switch into the Tyranitar because the only time Tyranitar probably wouldn't do it is if you see a Flame Orb on Sigilyph, because Sigilyph can use Psycho Shift to burn the opponent. You can use Trick as well. So in, in those instances, you might not want to get get the burn on Tsar. But yeah, he didn't see the burn, so I don't know why you air slashed there. Because looking at that team, unless Hydreigon was the Defogger, I think the Defogger was Sigilyph. So if Sigilyph had defog, you definitely defog there. But that makes it difficult. That makes it difficult doing this kind of commentary as well, guys, because I don't know the complete sets, of course. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well, guys. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Dislike this video if you didn't like it, and yeah, make sure to subscribe as well. As I'm on my way to 6k subscribers on YouTube, pretty cool milestone to hit as well. Getting us closer to that 10k, <laughs> which uh, is a long-term goal, of course, for, for us within uh, hopefully two years getting it, uh, but we'll have to see. I, I, I'm not sure how long I'll be playing this game, though, but uh, definitely got a, a man can dream, right? A man can dream. And yeah, uh, leave a comment down as well. Give me some suggestions on how I could do these kind of videos. And yeah, if you are interested in my PvP teams, consider checking out my Patreon. I have the poker base of every team I use on Patreon right there with an explanation usually of the team for you to check out. So uh, yeah, guys, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.